Okay, and then I'll introduce myself again. I'm Ginny, wellness advocate with doTERRA. Today we're talking about gardening using doTERRA products, especially the essential oils. So we want to support people who are motivated to just naturally improve their lives with essential oils. So use this opportunity to get comfortable with essential oils because all of our hopes, all of us people that are doing essential oils, the reason we do this, we're not doing this because this is um, just to make money. We do this because this is our lifestyle. This is what we'd love to do. We love to share natural alternatives and we know that there's a lot of alternatives out there and people can benefit from these. So, um, I'm hoping that we can reach you at the beginning of your journey and that we can find you know, help for you in finding solutions for various problems that you might be having. Today, we're gonna to talk about gardening um, and, and uh, the use of oils with gardening. And one of the reasons I really choose the doTERRA products, and that's why you know, I've chosen to represent doTERRA, to be a part of doTERRA. And honestly, it took me a year to decide. I, I had to decide between several different companies and I landed on doTERRA because for me, the most important thing to me at the time and still is purity. And anybody that knows me knows I've been in the organic industry for 30 years. I mean, purity is everything to me. Um, I want things to be clean and I check all the way back to their sources. I go back really far. I, I, with our textiles, we've sent up you know, samples to the labs to be tested because I want to make sure it's pure. So I really respect the fact that doTERRA did the same thing with their products, that they are constantly testing them, retesting them, in-house testing them, sending them out for testing, um, and that they're also at the same time getting um, research studies together, we're researching oils, and they're participating in those as well to help science learn more about the science of essential oils. Um, we love that doTERRA is um, harvested from its indigenous environment. I think it's very important because God is, is pretty good, <laughs> and, and I trust that he's made some good decisions, and hopefully that means that, you know, when they're in their indigenous environment as nature intended, um, then they are balanced to be helpful to us, because anybody that knows if you do any religious studies at all, and um, you would be reading and you would know that the plants and all, all the things that are out there growing, they are for our benefit. They were put there for our benefit. So whether you believe in God or you believe in nature, still, those things have been very beneficial to human beings for a very long time. That's why we know we have to eat our vegetables and, you know, us in essential oils also know we have to use their essential oils if we want to see the extra benefits we can get from that. Um, we love that doTERRA has looked at the climate, the seasons, um, the soil, so that they can end up with a really superior product. And that's just where it, the, their purity uh, commitment begins. Uh, they have all certified pure therapeutic grade oils, which we refer to as CPTG. And that's really important because that means that the oils have no fillers, no synthetics, no dyes, no pesticides or contaminants of any kind. They are just pure, unadulterated oil grown by experienced farmers in their indigenous lands. And doTERRA created this standard as a promise of purity and each and every batch is, like I said, third party tested, so you can be confident in not just their purity, but their potency, because that's another thing. We don't want to waste money buying oils that aren't as potent. We don't want to use 20 drops when we can use one drop, right? Seems a lot easier. And those of us who are in doTERRA and a lot of you guys out there maybe have seen how people are using the oils. We're using them topically. Um, and when we use them topically, they reach the bloodstream within about 20 seconds. And then they're distributed throughout the body within 20 minutes and reaches each and every cell in our body. Typically, we will use them topically and we'll put a carrier oil in them to make them um, adhere to the skin surface so they absorb slowly into the skin and to avoid skin sensitivity, um, especially around children and older people. And of course, our pets, right? Bottom of the feet, great place to put oils. We know because it's very porous and it, that allows for quick absorption. You can also put it on the back of the neck or along the spine, remember to dilute. Okay, uh, also we can use them aromatically. We can put a, palm, a drop in the palm of our hands, go like this, inhale. We get a lot of benefits that way, especially those respiratory benefits. Also, it brings it all into our system, into our limbic system and our olfactory senses pick it up. And that can also, you know, gets throughout our entire body. And uh, then we can use them internally. And doTERRA, of course, the really the only brand of oil that is just known for internal use. You have other companies that might come out with a few internal oils, but really doTERRA is the has the whole entire market of internal use oils because they have that purity that you need. So it is clearly labeled if it's used for internal use as much as most of our oils are. You can drop a drop of essential oil in your water or your tea 
And of course, any of the citrus oils would be great. And citrus oils help you drink more water. If you put citrus oils in your water, that will help you. It will give you a little bit of flavor and helps you drink more water because we're always you know, realizing we don't need to drink enough water and we need to drink more water because that protects our skins and our body as well, right? Um, look at some, at some chance when you get, look at the, uh, the uh, Healing Hands Foundation uh, because they have, that is a uh, nonprofit organization that doTERRA has created that is committed to improving the lives through partnering with organizations that are um, you know, offering hope to millions around the world. And the Healing Hands uh, seeks to bring healing and hope to the world, helping people live free of disease, living free from poverty. Can we talk about that? I want to... Um, Make sure I have the right slide. I wasn't sure which slide to use. Sorry about that. And you know, really, to um, ultimately, we want to empower these impoverished communities with the tools that they need to become self-reliant, like we are, right? Uh, and so, if you want to learn more about the Healing Hands Foundation, obviously, go to the DoTerra.com website. You can learn more about that. I love that you know the their high-quality oils has been making a positive difference in the lives of farmers, the harvesters. Um, the distillers who all contribute to doTERRA's oil production. And there's some great videos where you can look up the oils, the oil, how they're made. You can go to source2u.com. You get quality reports from each and every oil that you get. So if you look at the bottom of each bottle is a number here, you put in source2u.com and you can look up to see exactly what its chemical makeup is. Cause it's in a different year by year. It always differs just a slight bit because of, like we said, environment and everything like that. So you guys already know this. A lot of you guys that are here, I know you know this, right? So we want to um, reduce our toxic load to avoid becoming, you know, another statistic. Uh, and we want the versatility of the essential oils to make this change easy for us. And it has, right? And the oils can help you clean your home, reduce your stress, manage your seasonal threats. And today we're gonna to focus on one of your pride and joys, your beloved gardens. So hopefully a lot of you guys are gardening either indoors or outdoors, right? Um, and so we devote time to our garden. We want to nurture them. And we may be doing it as a hobby. We may be survivalists, maybe full time, get a lot of our food from our garden, right? Or we may just enjoy you know, having flowers in our home. There's a lot of reasons that we grow our gardens. And, it's, and right now with COVID out there and everything, we have, may have extra opportunity to, and definitely more reason to start growing things in our, on our own property, whether indoors or out. Um, and we know how much work it actually takes to grow a single tomato. And I don't know about you guys and how lucky you've been with this. And you know, I used to say I have a brown thumb and I had to learn a lot. I was like starting at the very bottom because I could kill any plant, even the, those air plants, I managed to kill those too. I just can kill anything, right? So I had to learn from the very bottom what I was doing wrong. Why aren't my plants suffering? thriving? Why aren't they even surviving, right? Why, why didn't my tomato plants make it? So I have you know, reached out to people around me. I've learned more about using essential oils in my plants to help them. I've learned about the critters in my environment so I can learn how to keep the critters away. And I've talked to our local nursery who is, that is wonderful also for giving me tips, um, tricks and stuff, how to grow better. So why throw away the chance of having an organic garden just so you can ruin it with tox toxic chemicals, right? And the answer is you don't have to. So one of doTERRA's best oil blends for gardeners is obviously Terra Shield. Now this newly updated formula, so it, we, I don't know if you know, but there used to be a different formula and they updated it more recently to the outdoor blend. Um, and this um, formula contains a select blend of essential oils, including Lang Ylang, cedarwood, catnip, lemon eucalyptus, litsia, arborvitae, and nutka, and vanilla bean absolute. And all of these possess you have specific chemical compounds that are known to protect against environmental annoyances. So among these are essential oils that provide a vapor barrier for plants, protecting them from potential threats in their environment. And you can make plants safe, people safe, and even pets safe, you know, with a pest spray by adding four ounces of the clean purified water, right? And 50 drops of Terra Shield in a glass or stainless steel spray bottle. So like I make it in here, this is an eight ounce bottle. So I just, you know, took that and we put about 100 drops of this in there into this bottle, which is about a third of a bottle's tear sheet, which is about $3 worth of essential oil. But this is now an oil that will last me, last might last me a few weeks, maybe a couple months, depending on the time of year. But anyway, I shake it and I spray on, I may spray it on me, I spray it, I spray it on my dogs a lot, and I definitely spray it on their beds because um, they get fleas. 
and with Terra Shield, the fleas actually go away. And I tried this recently because I saw fleas on them and we didn't have any of the medication to give them. And so what I decided to do was, hey, I'll just use the Terra Shield and see if I can get rid of it that way. And it worked. I was shocked. So the dogs are doing so much better um, because of that. So I know it works for fleas um, and it does work for a lot of other bugs. So just keep it out of your eyes, of course. Um, but you can spray on dog and cat bedding. So you want to spray on bedding when they're not there and let it dry. The dogs don't like it being sprayed directly on them, but I have on my dogs. I don't know if you, I would do that on cats. Um, they're so small, it, it might be a little bit strong for them, but I do spray it directly on my dogs. Um, again, it's just shaken. It's, it's nice and diluted with the water. But I do spray it on them when they start to get fleas or they're scratching because of unknown critters outside. So that is one of the little tricks there and Terra Shield is wonderful. So. Now it goes without saying that a day in the garden means like dirt on the hands. You, you come back, right, and you've been gardening. What do you got? You got dirt on your fingernails, you got dirt in your hands, and, and somehow that dirt like seems to merge with your skin, right? So um, this is a great exfoliating hand soap recipe, which is great to help care for the, your green thumbs, right? So you can also add a few drops of other essential oils, like maybe lime, lemon, or um, rosemary even. I do find when I use something like this, I did add lemon to mine because I find that lemon oil takes away all kinds of dirt and grime and grease off of my hands. So I usually like to add um, lemon oil to this. But this is a really good hand soap you can use after you've been working in the garden so your hands aren't gonna be dry and to you know, scrape some of that dirt out from underneath without destroying your hands in the process. Now, if you, you know, if you don't like, have the luxury of maybe keeping your tools in a greenhouse or gardening shed, you know, some of us, and I'm like this, I, I tend to leave my tools where I'm going to use them because I'm really too lazy to go find them somewhere or gather them up. So I keep mine hanging on the fence that's by the um, garden. So I want to make sure they're cleaned well uh, at the end of the season. So as I start gardening and gardening all summer long, at the end of the season, I will use something like this. And this is a great recipe to spray the metal tools, let them dry thoroughly so that you can store them because you don't want to store your tools covered with stuff, right? You want to store our tools clean. So this is a great recipe here. Um, and it's, it's simple, you know, it's just tea tree and water, right? Very simple. So um, you can make that recipe. Some of the other um, things that you want to remember when you're gardening, and this is kind of when you're talking about um, planting and how to get your plants to thrive. So one of the things we have learned over the many years of people studying gardening is certain plants do really well with other plants nearby. So, but sometimes we may not be growing those plants, especially if they're off season, right? So we can use the principles of companion planting by choosing essential oils for spraying or watering the vegetables instead of planting that plant. So I have a garden with a lot of vegetables in it. I don't want to plant rosemary in my vegetable garden but rosemary is a really good companion plant to keep certain things away. So what I do instead is I can use the rosemary essential oil in some water and I just spray the plants with those. And so that is something that needs to be done every, every few days um, because the oils will eventually, you know, they dissipate stuff like that. So every few days you wanna go in there, just do a little spray on your plants. So if you want to treat them with that extra love and care so that you have some really good quality plants, that's, that's how we can do it naturally. Um, normally when people do this, they may use chemicals and they're still doing the same thing. They're spraying every few days, but we're gonna do it with oils because we don't want chemicals in our food. We don't want chemicals in our plant. Um, so one of the things if you've read about essential oils, we know is when you plant plants near each other, what they are actually sensing from each other is the essential oil. It's the essence of the plant. And that's what the plant next door can sense. It knows that that oil's there you know, and be, so that's why the essential oils work. You don't have to have the actual plant. You need the essence of the plant. You need the essential oil from the plant. And that will trick it into thinking that there's rosemary nearby, which we can then, you know, utilize to solve different problems. Uh, so that can help a lot with your productivity. Um, and so you want to look up the different companion plants. We're going to go through a few of these uh, right now to, so that you know which ones they are. Uh, and you can use the essential oil instead. So a few of them right here would be, so you can add a drop of essential oil for every ounce of water used in your spray. So like this is eight ounces. So I put eight drops of each one that I wanted to use in this one. So basil essential oil is great for tomatoes and lettuce. Dills. Oops. Sorry, I'm gonna go back. I wanna make sure I'm on the right slide. Yeah, okay, dills love um, like dill oil you can use with for cabbage, cucumber, lettuce, and onions. 
rosemary is good for your beans, cabbage, and carrots. And sage, you would use curry sage for this, is for cabbage, carrots, and tomatoes. Uh, basil, marjoram, oregano, and thyme love all the garden crops. So what I created here, this is one I created, and I did this earlier today because I've just now redid my entire garden. I got a little cover for it so it would do better because the pine needles kept dropping on it and it was hurting my garden. So I got it all fixed up, put in new soil and everything, and now I made my spray. And tonight when it cools down, I'm going to go out there and spray my plants because this is my water with basil, marjoram, oregano, and thyme so I can get all my crops sprayed out there. So now it thinks that it's got all this, these great herbs in there as well, right? So those are some of the hacks that you can use. Um, now as a natural herbicide, you can use full strength on weeds and cracks and crevices. You can kill slugs by doing a 50-50 mixture of vinegar and water. Um, we get rid of slugs because we have chickens. <laughs> they love slugs, so they eat them. And we don't have snails or slugs anymore because we have chickens instead. Um, you can preserve cut flowers with vinegar. You take a couple tablespoons of vinegar and a teaspoon of sugar for every liter of water um, when you have cut flowers if you want to have them last longer. And then, of course, washing your garden veggies. If you are needing to wash your veggies, like if they're not organic and may want to wash them, you can use um, water with just a tablespoon of vinegar in about a liter and a half of water. Um, that being said, it is not a good, a great idea to wash organic vegetables because the, micro, the microbes that are on there from your garden are actually very, very healthy for you. So you want to wash the ones that you've grown personally and you know are very pure. You wanna wash them as little as possible. A lot of times I just rinse off any, any dirt that might be on it, but I really wanna keep all the beneficial things on my plants when I eat them. Um, and then, we have some other ideas here. So if you want to grow some bigger produce, you want to grow more flowers, you can consider things like Epsom salt. Um, magnesium is really critical for seed germination, production of chlorophyll, and aids in the absorption of the phosphorus and the nitrogen. So that's magnesium. And that is one of the things that's very high in Epsom salt. Sulfur is also a key element in plant growth, which helps produce vitamins. And to use Epsom salts, you add a tablespoon to the soil when you're planting or mix it into the soil around the plants that you already have. And you can dissolve like a tablespoon per gallon of water. So it's only one tablespoon per gallon. And you can water your plants with that every couple of weeks. And if you're having pest problems, then just throw your essential oil in with that. Well, you know, when you're spraying your plants, throw your essential oil in there as well. And that will give you even more help with that for growing some bigger plants. Where is that? Okay. Um, and then here are some of the, the key um, oils that you would use. Arborvitae is a great oil for just about all your, your pests. Um, basil is really good for flies. Cedarwood is really good for bed bugs and fleas. Um, cedarwood also, I know it doesn't mention it here, but it does really well specifically with closet moths, which is why cedarwood, a lot of times if closets are built out of cedar, it really is the oil from the cedar that prevents the moths from liking the environment. So I don't know why they didn't mention that here because I know that for a fact and I've used it. Um, eucalyptus is great for flies and roaches. Geranium is good for ticks. Um, lavender for fleas, flies, ticks, mosquitoes, moss. So we see a winner right here, that lavender, that is a great oil to fend off those things. And I actually went on a trip one time when there was a lot, we got there and there were a lot of bugs. And um, so as we went out, you know, everybody was like, gosh, what do we, we don't need bug spray or anything like that. And I was like, well, I got lavender oil. I'll just try that. And so I put the lavender oil, nobody bothered me. And it did not get bit by anything. And I usually get bit a lot. They, they like my blood and my, my whippy skin, I guess. Um, and then lemongrass is good for chiggers, fleas, mosquitoes, and ticks. So you can make some blends, obviously, with this. I mean, let's say you want to take lavender and lemon, I'm sorry, lavender and lemongrass yet together because you're preventing mosquitoes. We want to be very careful about mosquitoes. Nobody wants mosquito bites. You know, we'll worry about Lyme disease and things. So especially in certain places you may go, you definitely want to protect yourself from mosquitoes and you can use a blend of those two oils. Uh, patchouli is really good for gnats, black flies, and snails. Peppermint works great for ants, aphids, beetles, moths, plant lice, and spider spiders. Um, and the way these work, they don't necessarily kill the bugs, remember, like, because peppermint I use, and I use it for this purpose. And what it does is it seems to prevent them from wanting to come in. It's such a strong smell that they just don't want to be there. So you're not using it necessarily to kill the bugs, but to um, prevent them from being there. So I put peppermint a lot of times around the border of our house, especially where 
I see a lot of bugs tend to want to come in, like our back door. There's lots of little holes in the sliding glass door, and um, and bugs and critters want to come in. So I take this peppermint spray and I spray that. I also tend to spray things like I spray the trash can and stuff because it just smells. <laughs> so I spray it with peppermint oil because it smells so much better to me. Um, sandalwood is good for aphids and weevils. Um, and weevils generally, the only place I've ever seen them is actually in my flower. Like in, if, when you buy flower at the store, a lot of times they'll have weevil eggs in it. It doesn't seem to be able to be preventable. And then the weevils will eventually start to grow. Um, so I, I wonder if they took a little bit of sandalwood, like a drop and put it on a cotton ball and stuck it in my flower, if that would, what that would do. I don't know if it would make it so they just can't mature, so they can't grow. If, it, if they just don't like it, but they're stuck in the bottle, that's not gonna help me. <laughs> so yeah, that's something I have to think about that one. Um, thyme is good for beetles, chiggers, cutworms, and ticks. So time keeps them away. And then white fur is good for aphids, snails, and slugs. So you see a lot of crossover where you can use a blend of maybe a couple oils together if you're really struggling with something. Um, I noticed that the only one that really um, prevents spiders from getting in our homes is going to be some like peppermint oil, but that's a nice simple one that we can use. So, can I interject um, a question? Sure. Um, I had trouble with um, bees and hornets lately. Uh -huh. I tried peppermint, but maybe... Maybe I should, sorry if this sounds weird. I have in my earbuds. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah you're fine. I can even tell. Okay. Um, maybe I should try the Arborvite. Arborvite, yeah. 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 So you, so you notice none of these other ones repel bees. bees and no, no, most of them we don't want repel bees. bees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what about, you know, yellow jackets or hornets? They're beneficial to our plants. So a lot of times we don't want to prevent them. them. You know, you know, but, but, but you don't want to stun by them either. You know, you know we have a solution for when they do sting you. I don't know if there's anything that will um, actually deter, and maybe somebody else can answer this, if somebody knows of anything that will actually deter some of uh, the bees, because essential oils are often are used actually in bee feeding, because bees are attracted to these bee oils. So let me see. Um, oh, peppermint oil. It does say peppermint. And can be used along with clove, that totally makes sense. And you need to be lemon grass to keep, to keep wasps and, and bees at bay. So, so it, it works as a deterrent, it doesn't kill, kill them, them, which we definitely want to don't don't do, do, right? We want to keep bees, bees. But if you, if you want to keep them out of a certain area, area like if you're doing something with your family, you certainly don't want bees buzzing all the way. They said that's scary. Right? Yeah, I think I'll try lemongrass. Yeah, yeah, try some of the other ones. ones. Try some of these other things. And also citronella. I noticed it's not mentioned here. And I don't know why. I don't know if this was... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, this might have been created before citronella came out because it just came out last year. I would, I would also try citronella without a lot of those mixtures. Now, remember, citronella works by masking the human scent. So, so it works really good for pests that, that are attracted to us as, um, as, as a scent. You know, you know like um, definitely, definitely mosquitoes. mosquitoes. It's very, very attracted to humans and our, our body sense flies, flies are attracted to our scent, ants, ants those, those kinds of things, um, especially mosquitoes. So those, so those would be really, really good to add citronella. I don't know, I don't know if I would use citronella to um, deter bees. I don't think it would work. Right. And then, and then I don't know how to write day how that would work. I'd, I'd have to do some. I've never actually tried that one myself. I, I tend to use, I use cedar, cedar wood, I use eucalyptus, and lavender, lemongrass, and peppermint. I wonder, Jenny, if this doesn't mention citronella also because maybe it's not good in the in, next to a garden. I, I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? No, no citronella would be fine next to a garden. That's, that's not why. It's because this was designed for this was designed for care of this vegetation. So, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure it's because we didn't have sale oil until last September. Oh, I see. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the oil, oil didn't exist in the market. Now that, market. Now that we have it, I guess we need to do some more research on sale oil specifically to see if we can add that to any of our, you know, any of the things that we're currently using. But this is a good, you know, this gives you a good, um, you know, basis for what oils to use, whatever you're dealing with. So, you know, where I am, we mostly deal with fleas, if we the dogs, and then there, there is something, something else that tends to bite us, and I can't tell you what it is, whatever it is, it's very small, and, and it's something that the dogs bring into the house, so in the summer months, a lot of times we get bite, bite. who knows what, what right? <laughs> if we'll yeah. see what bug bites on our body, we don't know what they are, so, so I'm tempted to just grab some army bite and citronella just to stop whatever biting me, they don't know what it is. 
Yeah. It's very, very small. And, and one of the things it doesn't, doesn't mention, which I think is interesting, because it's not that common, common. people look think of it as, as a pest, it's not maybe this garden, garden, garden pest. pest. Sometimes, Sometimes you have other pests, pests. like there's, there's pests, pests that, that um, there's those little tiny uh, mites that get on chickens. So, so chicken, chicken mites are very common. common. Um, and, and, and we use essential oils to get, get I use essential oils in the in the chicken coop, and I do it when they leave one morning, I'll go and spray their whole area, like the people just use them. Um, and, and that gets and that seems to get rid of all the bugs. I don't know if they die or they disappear or whatever, or whatever. But, it, but it gets rid of the bugs. And then by the time, time they come back in at night to go to bed, the smell, smell is pretty much gone, gone so they, they won't be affected by the oil. You can you do, do that, that with a lot of different, um, with, with a lot of different, lot of different uh, pets that, 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 that will struggle with certain things. So chickens, I know, get mites, rats get mites, those mites can get on humans. And when I had rat mites, I used tea tree and it killed them. That was, that was nice and nice listed, is it? No, no, but it, but it worked really well. well. And I did the research at the time where it worked. You see, tree, tree along with lavender. It actually, actually kill them. It's not stop itching. So, so there are, there are some, some, you know, there are obviously some other things. And, and there's some other things you can use. So we'll go on to some of the other things we can use. Diatomaceous earth. So, so the food grade like diatomaceous earth um, is, is composed of magnesium, sodium, sodium iron, iron, calcium, calcium and silicone as some trace minerals. It's used, used by natural gardeners, gardeners around the globe as a natural insect control uh, protocol, in, in addition to, to you know, using the essential oils. And, and it works by drying out bugs on, on contact with its microscopic sharp edges that cut through the insects protected exoskeleton. Okay. So, so that means like bugs, bugs like ants, ants or aphids, bed bugs, bugs, cockroaches, earwigs, mites, snails, slugs, and rips, rips have to have direct, direct contact with diatomaceous earth, earth will instantly dry, dry out and die. So, so when, you, when you, you use it, you want to wear a dust, dust mask by plant to your garden. The food grade diatomaceous earth means that it's safe for plants. And you, and you can spray it wet by using a ratio of a cup of diatomaceous earth every two liters of water, so one cup. For two, for two liters, liters if you want, want to spray it wet, wet. and it's safer to spray wet because you're not inhaling it, you don't inhale it. Um, however, I, I, with, with, we, don't we don't have that much problem with it. Like it's something I use with my chickens, and I, you're supposed to use it in the, in the dirt, dirt dry, where, where they, they uh, dust, they, so chickens dust bathe, and, and they dig in the earth, and they flap their wings and stuff, and it cleans out the mites and stuff in the body. And usually the sand enough is enough to do it, but when we start getting some mites, and I can tell them when we have mites, they start itching and scratching, and then I start taking my diatomaceous earth and putting it in those spots. And then when they dust bathe, that will kill those same the mites, basically. Um, and, there and there are, are and, and, and just so you know, food grade diatomaceous, 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 diatomaceous earth doesn't have to be all fancy or anything like that. And any diatomaceous earth that you buy in the United States legally is going to be food grade because the non food grade is not actually allowed in, in the US. So, so I don't know if it varies in other countries though. So you, so you do want something that is safe for you, for you for children, for your plants, for your pets. So, so you definitely want to look for something that says that it is safe for enough. Right. Okay. 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 Or another, another way that we can kill, and you saw the different things it kills and how it works. So this, this is one that kills. So you don't want to use this for bees. We're going to use this for those little, all the little critters that are in the dirt, right? Or in, or in our garden. If you see the critters in your garden, you can like dice mace earth, and it won't hurt your plants. So, so it's a really, you know, really good choice. Um, so after you've been, let's say, digging, you're lifting, plucking, snipping, whatever, you get your arrows, you're adjusting, watering, gathering, and sewing, your sore muscles, your chat hands, blisters, and scrapes are obviously something that you left with, right? So then we can use our deep rub, which I can use. Um, I can use quite a bit. It's not right here, you just use it in here. Um, anyway, you can use that on your body. It is a heating. Leg, I remember. So, so I wouldn't use, use it like it's, it's really hot outside. I'm, I'm not using deep blue rub during the day. I'm going to wait till the end of the day to use it because it's already hot enough. I don't need anything that's going to heat up my body. Right, right now, I'm just doing prepping my oil in water, water as a spray just to cool me down because I'm so hot. <laughs> so, so uh, but at the end of the day, if you want to soothe your muscles, then you're going to want to apply deep rub, or you could even apply peppermint oil. Same kind of reason, right? Um, and, and then, then if you, you have, have your, your hands are all chapped, chapped and you're, 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 you know how they get when you garden and they get chapped and stuff like that, that. you can you use, use something like rose, um, um, citrus lettuce, or, or any of the lotions that Terra has that will help. Um, um, blisters can be soothed and improved, obviously, with lavender oil. And test scrapes are, you know, obviously, you want to get out your fresh right? right? Um, that's, that's that my play for this all natural way that helps clean and soothe the skin that is in distress from all that garden you've been doing.
So make, so make sure, sure you treat your body right after your garden. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to enjoy doing it. If you have a day of gardening and you feel lousy and, and your pain and stuff like that, you're not going to want to do it again. So you treat your body right, right so that you don't want to do it. Our gardening is great. So, so now, now, now it's time to sit back, relax, admire your hard work. With a tall glass of Canadian lavender lemonade. Do any ingredients to a glass of pitcher, just stir it. You adjust whatever you want to make it taste the way you want it. Serve it some ice, ice cubes, maybe a little bit of um, so lavender or lemon, just a slice of lemon or something like that. Um, and obviously, why, why this why the Canadian? Well, that's kind of that maple syrup, right? right? And it was known for its wonderful, wonderful maple syrup. syrup. So you get some of that delicious maple syrup in Canada. Yeah, you have these oils, oils to it, ice cubes and stuff like that. That, that makes a wonderful, wonderful lemonade. lemonade. So definitely, definitely try that. that. And we've, we've done, done some. Look at the picture and really think about it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could 
grow your own family. I, I love the feeling when I grow a family from a baby all the way, way to an adult, adult flourishing, flourishing plant. That is a wonderful feeling knowing that I did that from this little tiny seed or small seed you know, plant that I started with. So, so hopefully you guys can too, too and, and utilize this in your plants. I really encourage you to at least start with you know, one, one blend of something that you can spray your plants with so that, so that they can truly thrive. Okay, so, so hopefully, hopefully this has been helpful for you. For you. Again, Again, I'm Ginny, and, and if you have, if you have any questions, questions, reach out to me directly. directly. And if you, uh, if, if you, you want to share this with other people, go ahead and share this video, okay? So, so I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.